Um, I haven't heard from uh, live streamed. Okay. I haven't heard from Bhavna, um, but we should have quorum. So we'll just give it a few more moments to let everybody join and then we'll get going, Donna. Okay, so we have Pedro, Donna, Andre, Eric, Mark. I think we have quorum now. We do have quorum, yeah. yeah. So we are good to go, Donna, if you want. Um, we're waiting on Jamie and Fred, um, but I know Fred will be a little bit late. So I don't know if you want to give them one more minute or if you're ready to go, we can go. I'm ready to go. Okay. All right. Um, we will call this meeting to order. It is 4.01 p.m. And uh, I acknowledge with respect that we are on Robinson here on treaty territory, that the land on which we are gathered is the traditional territory of the Anishinaabe and known as Bawating. Bawating is the home of Garden River First Nation, Batchewana First Nation, and the historic Sault Ste. Marie Métis Council. The next item on our agenda is adoption of the minutes of our last meeting. Could I have someone to move and someone to second <clears throat> adoption of those minutes? Thank you, Eric. Thank you, Pedro. Any uh, discussion, questions, additions, deletions with regards to those minutes? Seeing none, all in favor? That's carried. Thank you. Uh, any declarations of pecuniary interest from anyone on today's agenda? All right, thank you. There are none. Um, moving on to adoption of today's agenda. Uh, I need someone to move into second the adoption of today's agenda. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Pedro. Um, any uh, changes to that agenda? Additions, deletions? Seeing none, um, all in favor? That is carried. Thank you very much. All right. Um, Emily, I think, or I don't think, I know, uh, the next uh, item on our agenda is the um, Environmental Sustainability Committee Project Priorities Working Group Update. Um, and I will ask for you to um, make that uh, presentation and then we'll move on to the actual um, motion that's uh, uh, included here. All right, I'm just gonna go and share my screen. Hmm. Uh, can people see it? Oh, no, nothing yet. I'm, it, I, I appear frozen, Robin. Oh, am I there? It's there now. Okay, um, I, my screen froze on me. Sorry about that. Okay, so can you see it now? Yes. All right, great. Okay, so I just wanted to give a, a quick summary on the efforts of the working group. You may all recall that earlier this year, um, we, we went through a bit of a ranking exercise. We identified different project ideas um, that we wanted to focus on as a committee and we narrowed it down to three. Um, and to oversee uh, the projects, to make sure that they were you know, completed, to champion them, I guess, if you will, um, we created a working group comprised of uh, Pedro and Eric, as well as myself, Tom Vare, and Travis Anderson. Um, so as a reminder, uh, the three projects had to do with active transportation, uh, the stormwater art initiative, and also uh, adding a pillar to the green fund to allow for uh, more regreening projects that encourage habitat restoration and resilient ecosystems. Um, so with regards to the first project, um, our goal here was to start an annual active transportation commute survey campaign to determine and promote active transportation year round. So we drafted a survey um, we shared it with um, the city's planning department, who we all know are working on implementing the active transportation master plan. And they've gone and integrated the questions that we developed into their stakeholder engagement. So as opposed to having two surveys going out into our community, they're taking our thoughts and they're going to include that in that project. 
Another task that we did is we took a look at the city's active transportation webpage, and it was quite lean. There were maybe a couple of images, not too many links. So we've gone and we've added some more information to it. Um, it's a starting point. Um, things that we're hoping will encourage more people to use active transportation, uh, active transportation 101, um, things to consider when it comes to using the bus, like how to use um, one of the bike racks on the bus, for example. So it's, it's a good starting point. We're hoping that it's something that we can build on in the future. So that, that with that being said, we considered this task complete. Uh, when it comes to the second project, as we all know, uh, the city did move forward with applying for to the Green Initiatives Fund to do a stormwater art project. Um, this is almost done. Uh, there were 12 catch basins that they identified for this project to paint. Six of them were to be painted by local artists and another six were to be painted by, by youth. Um, due to uh, the nature of the project starting in the summer and the schools being closed, um, they weren't able to get the uh, interest or outreach completed for the schools. So we've bumped that to next year. Um, but the first phase is complete. There are six catch basins that are painted around town. Uh, one of them needs to be touched up to include the, the language regarding rainwater only. And unfortunately, another one um, was, uh, it, it collapsed because of a sinkhole. So that is going to have, to, that's an unfortunate natural event that occurred. So that'll be fixed up next year. Um, this project also had a uh, tie in with the library to host a library's Love Lakes campaign where they had a campaign of books all about water and lakes that did take place. Um, but the plan that the working group discussed was that next year, when all of the painting is done, um, we will, we will redo that Library Loves Lakes campaign and also put out a press release that shows where uh, where all the painted catch basins are so community members can go and see them. So this is our plan. It's going to be executed. The Environmental Sustainability Committee will be updated on how this rolls out next year, but there really is no point for the, the working group to continue meeting because this will have to take place after the snow melts um, in the spring. The final project was adding a pillar to the Green Fund, which was a success. Um, so with that, uh, we'd like to uh, bring forward um, a resolution to dissolve this year's project priority working group. Um, so maybe I'll stop there, Donna, and ask if there's any questions before we move to the resolution. Anyone with questions about any of those projects? Um, I have a question about the, the catch basins that are still visible, the one, not the one that had the unfortunate um, incident. Were the when I originally saw them, don't ask me when now, but it, there was no wording this leads to the St. Mary's River. It, has that been added? It will be. It's it's part of the the spruce up, if you will, or the the fixing that's going to happen in 2023. We'll make sure that they all have that rainwater only or the St. Mary's River starts here. Okay. That was part of the scope. I don't know why the artists didn't include that, um, but it will be rectified to do that, Donna. Okay. And um, for consideration for future, um, uh, it might be, it should be, I would suggest, it should be part of a communications plan to talk about why those were done the way that they were and like really associate the rainwater only slash this leads to the St. Mary's river, um, 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 messaging back to residents so that it's, it's, you know, we're doing a little bit of, um, uh, you know, it's nice just to happen upon them, but I think we'd like to, you know, ideally talk more about it. Maybe there could be, you know, it could be something that could be included in next year's um, hub trail, um, 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 July uh, a focus on, you know, finding it, it just, just some way of continuing to engage, but not just to go and look at it, like to really help, um, any of us like understand that, that when we put water here, that <laughs> this is what happened. And we did this for a reason, right? It's a, it's a combination of an art and a science project, if you will. Um, and, uh, 
and and it has it has a purpose. Okay. Any anyone else with questions? If I could just add to that, sure. Donna. So a press release was drafted. Um, we circulated it for quotes to the different stakeholders. Um, Eric was involved in this project as well. It was his idea regarding the library's Love Lakes. Um, so we have a press release that's drafted that talks about those benefits, tying the artwork back to our water here in Sault Ste. Marie. But I'll make sure that that messaging is indeed very clear when this is finally wrapped up next year. Um, and we go, we, we launch the final press release. Thanks. Okay, so if I see no further questions, looking for someone to move and to second that we dissolve the working group um, as their work has been completed. Thank you, Andre, to move. And I just need someone to second, please. Um, thank you, Mark. Um, and I would also say, um, from my perspective, anyways, thank you to the, to those of you, uh, I think it was, um, Pedro, Pedro and Eric, Eric, correct. Okay. Well, thank you to both of you for, um, spending some extra time and helping move those new projects ahead. Uh, it, ma it makes a difference. And I know I, I certainly appreciate it. All right. Um, sorry, I have to keep switching screens here. So Emily, can you just take us through the balance of the agenda items? I see number yep. seven is the the um, Green Initiatives Fund commitments overview, and then the highlights from 2022, your staff update, uh, and that will take us to the um, uh, to the discussion on the next meeting. Yep. Okay, so I'm back to sharing my screen. Can everyone see it? Okay, good, it's working. Okay, so the next item on the agenda is to just summarize um, the projects that the committee has approved for the Green Initiatives Fund. Um, I, I took a few moments here to show some of the images, a lot of really interesting projects um, hitting uh, most of the pillars of the Green Fund from water, energy, emissions reduction. Um, so really, it's been a good year, in, in my opinion. Um, to, to drill down, oh dear. I'm frozen again. There we go. To drill down into some more details and just remind the committee, um, we had a total of 12 projects uh, that were um, recommended by the committee to go to council for approval this year. Uh, so we had the Tower Garden project from the YMCA, Shoreline Cleanup from Blue Mar for State Change, as mentioned, the Catch Basin Painting Project hydroponics workshop from the Innovation Center. Uh, we had a workshop from the Invasive Species Center regarding uh, aquatic and land invasive species. Uh, we had the Greco pool retrofit, the downtown bag and information rack cards, Conservation Authority retrofit, Clean North did their soil and RX bottle project, and also a retrofit at the Rod and Gun Club and the city's request for the deep energy retrofit audit. Um, so in total, uh, $90,000 and change were allocated towards these 12 projects this year. We have about $778 left um, in the fund, and those funds are to be spent on tree planting in 2023. Um, like I said, projects hit the GHG reduction, energy efficiency, water conservation and waste reduction pillars. Um, so I think this was uh, a pretty good year. Definitely more projects than the three that were reviewed in 2021. And hopefully we can continue to see more projects come in the future as the, as the fund becomes more of a, an established and known item in our community. So I'll pause here because this is it for this overview. Um, are there any questions? Okay, so I'm just gonna keep going then. <clears throat> so again, just to highlight, there were 12 projects. Just, I wanna highlight also what the committee has done. Um, so there were 12 projects that the committee supported, again, allocating $90,000 of funds towards. Um, there were resolutions of support for four key projects, and we also um, supported the City of Sault Ste. Marie Parking Reform Webinar presentation in September, which featured the City of Kingston and international, international planning consultant um, Brent Tadarian. So really great initiatives. Um, led by the committee this year. Moving into the staff update portion uh, for this meeting, 
Um, lots on the go, but one item I really wanted to highlight, and this is uh, going back to a resolution that the committee uh, supported in 2021 regarding the Community Efficiency Financing Project. Uh, so this is moving along quite well. Uh, we started our stakeholder engagement phase at the beginning of this month. Uh, I wanted to take an opportunity to ask the committee to share this information, to sign up and just spread the word. We'll be hosting an online information session at the city on Wednesday, November 16th from noon to one. Um, and this will highlight the benefits of having an energy efficient home, um, what home energy efficiency the study is, how it relates to homeowners and do a bit of a deeper dive into the different financial options being explored. Um, we have a residential project survey that's open for residents to fill out, and we also have a survey that's very specific to our local contractors and builders, and that's available as well. Um, so these will be open for feedback for about one month. And um, just again, uh, thank you to the committee for supporting this initiative, and please spread the word. The more feedback we get from the community, the better. Um, so I just wanted to uh, maybe wrap up uh, this very most likely shortest meeting on record for the committee um, to talk about uh, the next steps for the committee. So as you know, uh, we've, we've had an election and this committee's term will be coming to an end. Um, before I go into some of the details, I just wanted to thank you all uh, for your commitment to serve and sit on the very first Environmental S Sustainability Committee at the City of Sault Ste. Marie. Um, there's been some growing pains and a lot of lessons learned, but I'm, uh, oh, we've got a, a small visitor there. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Um, we've had a lot of uh, very uh, good projects, and I'm excited to see where this um, committee goes in the future. So your term on this committee ends December 2022, so next month. Applications are open now for the next term, which would be from January 2023 to December 2026. Applications are available uh, to be filled out online, and you have until um, the end of the month at 4.30 to fill those out. So if anyone has any questions about this, please feel free to reach out to me. You can also reach out to the city clerk's department as well. Um, so with that, I am done my staff update. I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Uh, at present, we don't have any applications or big initiatives to bring forward to the committee um, as of right now. A couple of issues, not issues, but projects need to go to council for approval and then we'll be coming back to the committee for updates on that. Um, so it looks like our December meeting may not happen. Um, so if there is a need, you'll be advised, but at this point, it doesn't look like it's happening. So with that, uh, I'm done my updates, Donna. And I don't know if there's any questions or comments from the committee, um, but yeah. Any questions from anyone? Yeah, of course, I've got a couple, Donna, if I could chime in. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, Emily, so one thing I noticed about the the committee is it's interesting that it's going to be a whole new application process without a thought to maybe continuity of any existing members guaranteed a spot, I suppose. Um, so that's one comment. The other interesting thing that I noticed is that it's now a four-year term instead of two years. Is there a particular reason for that? Yes. Um, so uh, to, maybe to just address your first comment. Um, so co existing committee members are eligible to apply again. Um, everybody who applies, be they existing committee members and new people who are putting their hat in the ring, um, they're all evaluated. The city has a, a process for that evaluation. Um, so it's just that's sort of the way it rolls. Um, with regards to the four years, so we started this committee um, all like halfway through a council term. And so that's why the commitment was only two years at that time. Um, per the city's procedural bylaw, this is a committee of council. So those committees, unless otherwise specified, have a four year term. Um, if you, for some reason, cannot stay. If you're selected to be on the committee and you cannot stay, you can resign and a posting will be posted uh, to fill in that spot. These things happen. Uh, so please don't let that be a deterrent. Um, you know, four years is a long time, but, you know, life happens as well. Yeah, that's great. Thanks for that clarification, Emily. That makes a lot of sense now. And I was going to say if the last meeting isn't maybe 
any formal agenda items, perhaps we can still have a little bit of pre-holiday cheer and, and get the gang together. Because a lot of you, I still have not met in person. Just throwing that out there. What a good idea, Jamie. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll send a follow-up email for sure. Um, anyone else with questions on, any, on anything Emily brought forward there? Emily, uh, could you remind, if we do end up having the meeting in December, wh uh, what would the date be? So the date that we have scheduled is Thursday, December 8th. Um, okay. And, you know, there's a there is a council meeting in December that I have to go to with some some key project updates etc. Uh, so unfortunately, our meeting happens before that. Um, but uh, if there is if there are other applications to the green fund um, that are received, we would need to have a meeting um, for sure. And any key project updates or requests from the committee as well. But as it stands, uh, I'm not seeing any, but that could change. And with regards to that, you bring up an important point. Sorry, Pedro, you go ahead. Yeah, no, I, I just had a comment uh, as we are coming to the end of the year and looking back in at the two years. Um, I think it's really nice to have these uh, a report like uh, Emily presented about what was accomplished at the end of the year. Um, but one one thing that came to mind was going forward, how does this committee um, or do we want to at the end of the day, look back at the carbon emissions targets that we have and see, engage, how, where are we at? So 12 years ago, we had these emissions, where are we at now? And and the cherry on top of the bowl of the cake would be if, uh, if, um, if we could even um, determine how much the actions of the committee or the funding that was spent on all these projects how have they contributed to 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 reach to reach the targets? Um, it's it's not a criticism because this is not easy to do. It's it and this is an ongoing. Um, all this is what we're doing and trying to achieve is is an ongoing uh, uh, project. And and like I said, this the, these things are not established and 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 and, and um, we don't have processes to do that right now. So my question then to for for more for 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 Emily is how do you envision um, first of all, is this something that would be is, is it naive to assume that it's possible to do um, and if if not, then how could we get what would be the best way to start quantifying, success in a way for lack of a yeah so it's happening um the city's updated corporate emissions inventory needs to go to council first before i can go to the committee um so it has been updated but that's just the process that i have to follow so we'll be able to see um not just based on um the actions of the committee but the actions of the city as a corporate entity, you mm -hmm. know, what's been done since the last emissions inventory, which is based on 2017 data. So from a process, I just, I have to go there first, but it's, it's there and we're going to see it as a committee and we're going to talk about it. Um, when it comes to community emissions, so community projects, two points. One is um, per the GHG reduction plan, it recommends updating our community emissions inventory every five years, whereas corporately, so based on municipal operation emissions, we're on the hook to report those once a year per the city's race to zero pledge that we signed last year because of a recommendation from the committee. Um, on the community side, we'll be updating those every five years as well, and we'll be discussing those with the committee. When it comes to projects that uh, community groups or city departments apply for funding for to the Green Initiatives Fund, if the project is one that would result in GHG emissions reduction, we ask if they can, um, the project applicant to note an estimate on the tons of CO2 equivalent that the project could reduce. So far, the only projects that, um, have really been able to highlight that 
uh, are, for example, the heat recovery initiative where we had an estimate back in 2021. And then we've had a couple of uh, lower numbers for those LED retrofit project upgrades. Um, but it is something that we want to see hopefully more of. And I'm hopeful that if we have future projects from the city after, if we're lucky, we do those energy audits, uh, we, can, we can have some values to, to put towards these projects, as opposed to just saying, hey, you know, we think this is something that's going to reduce this by so much, we might have a better number. So in addition to updating the committee on our corporate emissions, whether they've gone up or down, um, we'll also be, I will also be updating the committee and council um, on what have we done, uh, you know, where, where we're headed and, and the trajectory that we're on. So we are there. It's just, unfortunately, I have to, not unfortunately, it's just the process. I have to go to council first. Of course. Yeah. Thank you. Anyone else with questions? Um, Emily, can you tell us um, if there are no further <clears throat> applications to the Green Initiatives Fund, can you tell us what remaining funds are left there from 2022? And um, uh, remind me, please, if the um, use of those remaining funds is automatically transferred into tree planting for the following year, or if that's a decision that we have to make. Okay, so for this year, if we have no more projects that come in for us to consider, we only have $778.11 left in the fund. Um, uh, until the, there was a resolution that was passed in 2021 um, that said for the remainder of that term of council, any remaining funds to the Green Initiatives Fund must go towards tree planting on city lands in the following year. Because, so we're still in this term and whatever funds are left this year will go towards tree planting. Moving forward, because that resolution was only for this term, that will need to be something that is discussed with the new council um, regarding any remaining funds or if it turns into a, a reserve system that you see for other funds at the city. Okay, so we have about $800 to go towards tree planting for next year. Yep, in addition to the budget that the city already allocates towards tree planting. So it's something. Okay. Um, anyone with anyone anything else to bring forward before we uh, adjourn? Seeing nothing, uh, could I have a mover and a seconder to adjourn this meeting, please? Uh, thank you, Pedro, and thank you, Andre. All right, take care, everyone. Maybe we'll see you in December. Bye. All right. Thank you, everyone.